Um, I don't know. I'll talk to him. Maybe he's got like some sort of PayPal account or something. But um, in respect for him, I, I can't just give it out because the insane amount of work that goes into making an actual RPG. I mean, if you think about it, he wrote a book. Um, he had to come up with weapon stats. He had to come up with not just the, this game system, but the entire world, all the monsters and how they're run and what weapon does what damage and how much that weapon costs and how fair is that and what's a fair number to give this treasure and all that stuff. I mean, all that work. So, uh, I'm, I'm in talks with him and anyone who wants it, um, we will be able to work something out. I promise. Um, I, I don't think it'll be that hard for my dad to set up some sort of PayPal account and uh, mail it to anyone who is interested. I don't see there being a huge demand for it, but whatever. Anyone who wants it, you know, we'll, we'll, we'll work it out. Alright. So now I'm at 511. So I'm getting right about 100 every time I come out here. That's not bad. It's not bad at all. I might level up a couple times. Do about an hour, hour and a half of grinding. Level up a couple times. I would love to get to level 30, but I think that might be pushing it. Let's see, what level am I? Yeah, 25. Yeah, five levels is probably going to push it a little bit. Uh, <laughs> but we'll see. We shall see how far I get. Alright, so um, let me know about that for the... Uh, Monsters and Slayers RPG. If, if you guys, and let me just say, if you guys were like, well, I mean, if you had a copy, I'm interested, but if, if I had to pay, never mind. But I, I don't see that being the case, but let me know. Ah! But I still enjoy playing it. Uh, every once in a while, we'll get together and we'll play it, and it still is my favorite pen and paper RPG. Because everything's handled so much more realistically um, than Dungeons and Dragons. I, it never made any sense to me that your armor just makes you more difficult to hit. It's not like it makes you a smaller target. Uh, you just as easy to hit with armor as without it. It just blocks the damage. That's what armor is designed for. So, it just makes more sense that way to me. Um, and uh, a lot of the spells are... Uh, really interesting. Um, like Dungeons and Dragons, I don't know. The spells at like first level are, yeah. But uh, Monsters and Slayers, the spells are a lot uh, more effective a lot sooner. Does that make sense? I don't think that makes sense, did it? And I don't know why I went down here. Um. You know, I probably don't have to go all the way back to this every time. I just thought about that. I'm wasting a lot of time here, aren't I? Um, and losing my train of thought. You guys have to excuse me. I am exhausted. Um, but I'm at work, so... <laughs> Can't just go to sleep. Uh, yeah, no, but yeah, Monsters and Slayers is so much more realistic in my opinion. I like the idea that you're part of a guild and all that good stuff. Um, now what I was saying is that the first level spells can be really useful. Like there's one called Mend. Uh, I don't know if Dungeons and Dragons actually has this spell or not, but uh, I just remember from Monsters and Slayers there's a spell called Mend that has, uh, it's a level one spell and it has many, many uses. Uh, you can use it to mend your armor in case it was damaged somehow. Um, you can use it to uh, men, you know, like, say your map got torn into pieces or something, or you can use it to, uh, mend wounds. Um, it's definitely not a cure light wound spell, but, um, it will heal a little bit because it will literally mend muscle back together or bone. Um, so, you know, the spells have a lot more uses than the average spell. Um, there's one called Polish, which, uh, basically cleans and polishes something and can be used for a lot of purposes as well. Like, say, for example, um, you need to, you have, like, dirty water, you can cast Polish on it and it will clean the water. Um, it'll clean your armor, it'll clean wounds. Let's say a wound, uh, um, uh, there's, a uh, orcs in that game, uh, look a lot more piggish 
than they do in like say Dungeons and Dragons. But uh, orcs have a nasty habit in that game, and I don't know if this is in D and D or not, but of rubbing uh, feces on their blades because uh, if feces gets in your wound, it acts like a poison, and uh, polish would clean the wound. Um, so a lot of the spells had many, many. Uh, uses. That's the word I was looking for. In any case, enough about that. Let's go on to the next thing. Um, Final Fantasy characters. Um, I said last time I couldn't describe to you all the Final Fantasy characters because that's just going way too into detail. And they said, well then could you at least describe the characters that we run into? Uh... Yes, I will try, but you're running into the same territory because um, it's really hard to describe these characters from these very complex games and the worlds they're in without explaining the complex games and the worlds they're in. But I will try. Oh. Say what? <laughs> Fine, I guess I gotta go back to the save spot or something. Ah. Uh, Let's go start with Squall, or Leon, as he's called in this game. He was the main character for Final Fantasy VIII, the person that you, uh, you know, your main protagonist or whatnot. And uh, he was very emo, very, I don't care. I mean, hell, his teacher had the hots for him, and she was a hot teacher. And he's like, whatever, all I care about is Sefer. I want to beat him because he's like me, but different. <laughs> and uh yeah um he had what was called the gun blade and uh like a key blade huh wonder where they got that idea from but uh he had the gun blade which was uh, a sword and a gun combined probably not the most practical invention in real life but it worked rather well for an RPG uh and I really liked it too because Every time you'd attack an opponent, if you hit R1 precisely when you attacked, uh, you would pull the trigger and do extra damage. So it was really cool. Um, God, I wish the save wasn't so far away. But whatever. Uh, uh, but yeah, he was he was incredibly emo in that game. He, uh, he eventually fell in love with uh, Renoa, but... Darned if he would say it. He definitely wasn't the kind of guy that would bring her roses and give her a huggles when he met her. <laughs> but Squall also had kind of a charming innocence, I guess I would say, to him. Uh, there's one scene in particular in Final Fantasy VIII, it's a FMV, when he first meets Renoa, actually. Uh, they're at like a, a ball celebrating them becoming seeds, which is uh, when you have to understand the game. but. In Final Fantasy VIII, you and a lot of your characters are uh, part of an organization called C, which is basically really highly trained mercenaries. Um, and it's like a school. And, uh, you know, early into the game, you graduate as a full C member, and you're at that celebration, and uh, you run into her, and she asks you to dance. And, and the, the cutscene is so... I hesitate to use the word adorable because I don't think it's adorable. I'm just I'm having trouble coming up with the right word for it. But he's so awkward. You know, she's graceful and she can dance and he's like stepping on her feet and just doesn't know what he's doing and he's so uncomfortable and and um, that kind of thing kind of endears Squall to you because he, he's kind of apathetic but at the same time he's very uh, naive, very innocent kind of guy. But, uh, so yeah, um, that's Squall, or Leon in this game. Trust me, the, the Leon in this game is nothing like the Leon uh, in Final Fantasy VIII. Uh, who else you got? You got Sid, which every Final Fantasy has a Sid. Let's, let's be clear, Final Fantasy loves to reuse names. Uh, in Final Fantasy VIII, Sid was actually the leader of the School of Seed. Um... In Final Fantasy uh, 6, it was... God, I don't remember. Sid was a character, I think. I don't remember. I've never actually played 6. Uh, I plan to fix that sometime soon. 
Probably not as an LP though. Um, but in seven, he was a pilot. Um, excuse me. Who uh, wanted to go to the moon? Always dreamed of going out into outer space. Uh, not go to the moon, but go to outer space. And uh, he's very foul-mouthed and very uh, angry all the time. He's just always angry. <laughs> but he's a really nice guy. Uh, he just doesn't like to show it. Uh, you know, one of those uh, sweet guys that hides it under a rough exterior kind of thing. Um, he's always cussing in that game. Um, and he's a good pilot, and his dream was always to go out into outer space. Um, and he he's very close. He's closer in this game than he is than Leon is to his original self, because like you know, in the story, he's still gruff, like. What do you mean? What are you flying around space? You don't even know how this stuff works. That's definitely vintage Sid right there. Um, but, uh, yeah, that's Sid. See, the problem is you can't really describe these people without knowing the game because the game is so much of who they were and why they're so memorable. Uh, honestly, if you're interested in these Final Fantasy characters, you should play Final Fantasy. I, I, I mean it. I really mean it. It's, it's some of the, my favorite games of all time. They have some of the best stories. Now, maybe not the most realistic stories. I'm sure there are plot holes everywhere. But if you can suspend your disbelief even a little, they are some fantastic stories. And not because they're incredibly... Citizen Kane and all that stuff, you know, thought out and all that. No, it's because the writers of Final Fantasy games really know how to attach you to the characters and make you care about them. So you care about what's going on in the story. Um, and some people disagree. Some people are like, ah, oh, Final Fantasy VII sucked. Other people are like, Final Fantasy VII is the best one. Whatever. You make up your own mind. I, uh, I personally, my favorite's 10. Um, I've played 10 more times than I care to count. Uh, I loved 7. 7's what got me into RPGs, or Japanese RPGs in the first place. I loved 8. Uh, probably more than 7. Uh, even though it had its annoyances. I love the card game in 8. Uh, actually, there's a... Ah, I'd have to find it again. There's actually like an internet website that will just let you play the card game. And it's awesome. <laughs> Because that card game is so addicting. Nine? I must confess, I've never beaten nine. I've gotten two-thirds of the way through, and then I didn't beat it for some reason. But, uh, yeah. Nine was... Okay. It wasn't fantastic. Uh, but like I said, I didn't beat it, so... I didn't like the card game in 9 because it was like 8 except it added a whole bunch of luck to everything and I didn't like that because 8 was all about skill. It was nothing but skill. And 9 still had luck involved. So, uh, Yuffie was a thief in 7. Final Fantasy 7, she was a thief. She loves stealing stuff. In fact, the way you <laughs> the way you got her as a party member is you'd run around the forest and she'd show up and she'd steal something from you. <laughs> and uh, she'd be like a fighting character and you had to fight her several times to get your stuff back and then she'd join you. And uh, she was completely optional. Oh no. And she was a completely optional character, uh, but still a lot of fun. Uh, Cloud, the guy we fought, was the main character of Seven. Uh, like Squall, he's very emo. But, to me, Cloud didn't have the same charming, charming innocence that Squall did. Cloud was just emo. <laughs> because, because Squall was was young. You got the idea that he was just coming to manhood and just growing up from being a child and, and Cloud was already... Cloud had already been through a lot. He really had. By the time Final Fantasy 7 started, Cloud had been through quite a lot. Um, he was uh, portrayed as 
a soldier who's already the elite of the elite and already been through a lot of stuff. And he just didn't have to me the same innocent squall, dude. I guess you would say. 